And now on the sexual harassment investigation involving two Oregon lawmakers, and I know it seems like we've covered a lot of these, unfortunately, in recent years. So here's a little recap on this one. Representative Vicki Breeze Iverson, a Republican, needed some votes to move legislation forward. So she texted across the aisle to Democrat Brad Witt. And we should note, he was the chair of the Agricultural Committee, which she also sits on. She asked him for his support on a bill in that committee, but he declined. So she pushed the issue and he responded with this text. We probably need to go for a beer sometime. She never addressed that comment and she responded by further explaining the bill to which he replied, I'm not wedded to a beer by any means, could be dinner or dot 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 question mark. Breeze Iverson texted back, or what? To which Wit wrote, I've made two offerings. If you want to meet, find something better than dinner or a beer. So the question here is the intent of those text messages. Lawmakers on the House Conduct Committee met yesterday to try and determine that. And Breeze Iverson says she interpreted that as a quid pro quo, as in a vote for her bill in exchange for sex. Wit denies that. At yesterday's hearing, he apologized and he just said he wanted to schedule a meeting with her outside of the office to talk about the issues they were having on that committee. I sincerely regret the uh, distress that uh, my text message uh, may have caused the complainant in this matter. Uh, I would never want anyone to feel uncomfortable around me and I am uh, deeply sorry that my message was misunderstood. Never, not now, and not when I texted, did I intend or expect my words to be construed as lewd, salacious, or in any way inappropriate. All right, so we've also heard from Breeze Iverson herself. In fact, here's what she told Dan a couple of weeks ago about how this made her feel uncomfortable at work. It has been difficult. It's difficult to, to know that there are pieces of legislation that we still need to further. And to do that effectively, I need to be able to have a conversation with, with all of the members of the committee and, and counterparts. There is a certain amount of anxiety in knowing that I need to ask permission for something of, of the chair of a committee when it comes to, to just furthering legislation and knowing that when I asked that chair for something as simple as consideration of a vote for a piece of legislation that I was trying to get across the House floor, that I was, I was responded to with, with all these options that had nothing to do with the legislation. So there is a, there is a anxiety and a, a, a lot of, a lot of extra mental effort to get through a process that is already difficult. Okay, so after hearing from both sides, as well as an independent investigator, the conduct committee did find that Witt created a hostile work environment for Breeze Iverson with those text messages. But they say it did not constitute a quid pro quo, as in trading a date for a vote. Witt already agreed to temporarily step down from chair of his committee, and it's possible the conduct committee will discipline him further. So we will keep you posted.